Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a brand new week, and welcome to Pray First. It's a conversation we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. right here on the Pastor Doug page. Thank you guys for tuning in. Also, if you would, hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag shared. Get this out on your page. Not only can you share this video, but you can also share the Pastor Doug page. If you share the Pastor Doug page, that way many people can uh, follow it, get notifications when we go live, and you won't have to uh, repeatedly remind them because they will be part of the Pray First family. I just have this sense that this is going to be an incredible week. And I know the topic we're talking about today just really, it just inspires me. I cannot wait to talk about this. So I'm going to go ahead and get this out on my page. I want to welcome all of you new folks. What's up, Amy, Molly, Charles, Brandy, Neil, Bobby, Barbie, Chip. And if I missed your name, I'm sorry, Leah, uh, Loretta, uh, Bonnie, Randy. And I'm going to have to stop naming names because you're all coming in here. What's up, Charles Woodard? Man, you did a great job on the wedding this weekend. All right, so hashtag the live, hashtag the recorded, hashtag the shared. Get this on your page. Let's hit some hearts and hit some likes and let all of our first-time viewers know that we're so excited that they are here and I've got to jump right in. So here's the deal. You need to know the Word of God. You know, we come out of a series where the enemy's uh, primary function was to steal the Word of God from you. That the seed was being planted and that the hearts were not prepared and the birds of the air were stealing the seed before they produced fruit in your life. So you can shake your head and you can amen and do all these things, but being told the word and knowing the word is two different things. Hashtag told, hashtag knowing. Being told the word and knowing the word is two entirely different things. If it is such an emphasis for the enemy to steal the word from you, then that should tell you and I that knowing the word is of utmost importance. Hashtag utmost importance. It is extremely important to know the word, to know what it is written. Okay, One of the most repeated phrases in the New Testament is it is written. And that indicated that someone was repeating what scripture said. The seed had come, it had implanted in their heart, and they had began to use it. They had began to use it in a fruitful way. They had begun not to use the Word of God as a mace to spray people with, or say, ooh, I caught you in a sin, or ooh, you're doing wrong, and you're doing bad, and you're, you're, you know, you're broken. We know all this stuff. But these people, the seed has come into their heart, and now they use God's Word as a mirror, and they use God's Word as a powerful force to come against the enemy. And the enemy is not our neighbor, our friend, our ex-wife, our ex-husband. You know, the enemy is not the Democrats or the Republicans. Our enemy is not flesh and blood, but rulers and principalities of darkness. Those thorns from the last series. Those birds of the air from the last series. Those things that come up and choke the word inside of us. So Jesus and Paul repeated the phrase, it is written more than anyone else. Jesus and Paul repeated the phrase, it is written more than anyone else. And, 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 and the evil spirits and the, and the situations and the circumstances and the people around them took notice of Jesus and Paul and knew who they were because they knew the word. And they quoted, it is written. Guys, you can't quote what is written just because you were told. You quote, it is written because you know. All right, so let's look at this passage in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 through 17, where these, this, this, this phrase has been used. It is written, and they are known. Jesus and Paul uses it over and over again. Listen to what happens when someone tries to, tries to rid themselves of the birds of the air, the thorns. They try to come against the habits and the hurts and the hang-ups that have developed in their life. They try to you know, take a stand in their own authority. Listen to what happens when someone does that without the Word of God. Now God, this is in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 through 17. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul. Hashtag unusual. God worked unusual so there were miracles that were usual, and then there were these unusual miracles that were uh, at the hands of Paul. Verse 12, 
so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Don't you know it's because Paul understood the power of it is written, what's written in the word. Jesus and Paul both would say it is written and then proclaim the word. Okay, verse 13. Then some itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves. Took it upon themselves. They're going to go in their own might, in their own power, in their own strength, and they're going to resist the enemy. Listen to what happens when you go in your own power, your own strength, and try to resist the enemy. So these itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call on the name of the Lord over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Say, so, uh-oh. We exercise you. In other words, we cast you out. We're taking back our land. We're taking back our property. We're done with this sickness. We're done with this habit. We're done with this hurt and this addiction and this hang-up. We're going to cast you out, thorns. We're going to cast you out, you know, birds. We're going to take care of you. We cast you out by the name of Jesus who Paul preaches, okay? So they'd heard Paul preach Jesus. They'd heard about the word, but they didn't know the word, okay? Big difference. Big difference. Listen to what happens. And also there were seven sons of Scivia, a Jewish chief priest who did so also. Now listen, they speak to these spirits and say, I cast you out in the name of Jesus who Paul knows. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Listen to what the evil spirit says back to these Jewish itinerant priests. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. Paul I know, but who are you? In other words, who are you? Where is your authority to come against the enemy of your soul? Where is your authority to speak to us in this manner? Jesus and Paul quote the scripture of the Lord they know, the God they know of who they are. They, it is written, it is written, but who are you? You heard about them one time or something? Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Verse 16, Then the man in whom the evil spirit was on leaped on them, overpowered them. This is one man whipped all these folks. <laughs> overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked. <laughs> You can't make this up. You should read your Bible. Naked and wounded. Now, that's funny in that story. But that's not funny when it happens to you. It's not funny when you try to come against an enemy that is real and powerful and you don't have your sword. You're trying to wear somebody else's armor. You're trying to come against it with some other power. You're determined. You've decided. You're intentional. Well, that's fantastic when you're dealing with people. But when you're dealing with someone that, that, or something or some being that is supernatural, you better have your sword, not somebody else's. You better have your armor, not somebody else's. You better not go home and fight your spiritual battle saying, I'm praying in the name of Jesus who Doug talks about. You speak, it is written in the name of Jesus, whom you've accepted as your Lord and Savior. This spirit, now I know some of you probably don't believe in spirits, uh, but you're going to uh, you're gonna have to explain that to me, uh, how this story, these passages in Jesus, all of them speak about the spirits, and you cling to John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, and you're going to heaven, but you don't believe this. Why do you believe that? Spirits are real. Darkness is real. Uh, the whole sermon series, or the whole you know conversation series on the seeds dropping on the ground. Who do you think stealing the seed? It's not your DNA pattern. It's it's not your uh, 401k. It's not the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq. It's not all. Oh, there's just diseases in the world. Look here. No no no. The enemy's come to steal, kill, and destroy from you. Who's your enemy? To think you don't have one is supreme ignorance, and it is dangerous. To come against those enemies in your life and try to overcome them without knowing what is written is dangerous and it is ignorant. 
It is written is powerful, and Satan wants to tempt you in three areas of your life. And I've been talking about these three areas where he wants to tempt you with the Word of God because Satan, he knows the Word of God, and he repeats the Word of God. So we're going to jump into the second one today. These guys, listen to this. They fled the house naked and wounded. Hashtag naked. Hashtag wounded. This became known to all the Jews and all the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear. Look what, look what was generated when they lost the battle because they didn't know the word. Fear. When you lose the battle, fear will grow. When you lose an area of your life or when you look back on your life and you think about the times that God let you down, Fear will grow. Fear is a spirit. God has not given us that spirit. It says, when all the people heard this happen, fear fell on them all. And listen to what happened. It backfired on the enemy. And the name of Jesus was magnified. In other words, when the enemy tried to silence the name of Jesus or mute the name of Jesus, it was magnified. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so the enemy's going to try to tempt you to not trust Jesus for provision, and he's going to misquote Scripture to you, and he's going to deceive you about provision. We talked about provision last week. Go back on the Pastor Doug page and listen to that. Today we're going to talk about protection. Does God protect us? How do we know? What does God protect us from? Sometimes, you know, our adult experience don't match our childhood faith, and we thought God was just going to be there all the time, and He is, but He's just going to make everything right for us, and He doesn't, and we're living in this broken world, and bad things happen. So you need to know the Scripture, or the enemy will say to you, where was God? God said He would never leave you or forsake you, but if you look at this time in your life, He left you, didn't He? He forsook you, didn't He? He didn't remember you. He didn't care about you. He didn't protect you. So the enemy will take those words. He'll even take scripture and plaster them on your soul and say, God failed you. God left you. God ignored you. You prayed. You didn't ask for anything. You were a child. Why didn't God? Where was God? Absent God. Have you ever felt like that? Hashtag yup yup. Come on, that's legitimate. I'm going to yup yup. Hashtag yup yup. That's from me. I can't type it right now. So when he talks about protection and your ground is not made well there, guess what thorns are going to pop up there? You won't be able to believe him for protection. You won't be able to pray for protection. You won't, you won't be able to trust him for protection. The birds of the air, the thorns, the sun will scorch that seed. You know, he's, he doesn't have to scorch all of your seed. The enemy can pick apart one area of your life that causes you to focus on that area and you won't see the rest. So let's talk about this. Satan quotes scripture. He quotes scripture to deceive you and to deceive me. So what do you do when Satan quotes scripture to you and your life's experience doesn't back up your childhood Sunday school lesson and it looks like God left, and it looks like God forgot, and it looks like God ignored, it looks like God doesn't care, and it looks like God is absent. You need to read the Word of God for yourself. I can't even begin to tell you how powerful the Word of God is when you read it for yourself. Hearing my messages, hearing pray first, hearing someone quote it, knowing the Jesus that Paul knows is not enough for you. You need to know the Lord yourself. And as you read these verses, they are supernatural. The Bible is living and active and sharp. It is living and active and sharp. You need to know Scripture. You say, well, I can't understand Scripture. Well, Scripture interprets itself if you will continue to read it. The Holy Spirit will come alongside of you as you accept Him into you, and He will begin to, uh, 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 to inspire that Word for you, and you will begin to understand it in time, in progress, in stages. But here's something you need to know about Scripture. When you read a Scripture and the enemy says, well, God failed you there. When you read a Scripture and you think, well, that haven't, hasn't happened in my life. And when you read a Scripture and you think, you know what? That doesn't seem like a loving God. Come here, come here, come here. You need to know the context of a scripture and you need to know the character of God before you try to decide that God is anything but good based on the scripture. You need to know the scripture's context and you need to know the character 
of God. Because you can pull any scripture out of the Bible and you can, you know, pretty much substantiate anything you want to substantiate. Well, here's my scripture I got and here's what the word says. Well, here's a couple examples why that's not a good idea. I can prove to you with scripture that Moses played tennis. Hashtag Moses, hashtag tennis. I can prove to you with scripture, I can pull one scripture out of the Bible and prove to you that Moses played tennis. Well, pastor, how do you do that? Well, it says that Moses refused to serve in the courts of Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could write a whole book that Moses refused, you know, hop, hop, one, seven, three, hop, hop. Moses served in the courts of Pharaoh? Are you joking me? I want you to see how we pull Scripture out of context. We pull Scripture out of character. I can prove to you that David rode motorcycles. You know King David, David and Goliath, through the rock, David and Bathsheba, dude out there on the balcony with binoculars at night looking at another man's woman. David, that David, King David. David rode a motorcycle. Scripture says that David's triumph was heard throughout the land. Hashtag triumph. Hashtag motorcycle. I can take a scripture and argue any point you want when I take it out of context and I ignore the character of God. Here's one more, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for this one, but I can prove to you that there will be no women in heaven whatsoever. No women are going to heaven. I have a scripture for it. In Revelation, it says, Not a sound was heard in heaven for 30 minutes. <laughs> Woo! Not a sound was heard in heaven for 30 minutes. Come on, guys. That's how crazy it can get when you pull Scripture out of context. And some of you might say there won't be any pastors there either because they never shut up. And you would be telling the truth. So how do you know God will protect you? Well, here's how. It is written. It is written. How do you know that God will protect you? We talked about provision. Now let's talk about protection. How do you know God will protect you? Because it is written. Okay, I want to I I ask you something. I'm in big trouble, Rita Gray. I stay in big trouble. Um, <laughs> how, how do you know this? How did Jesus know Scripture? Okay, if you need to know Scripture, amen, Chip, I may need a loan. If, if, if you need to know Scripture, how do you learn Scripture? How did Jesus learn Scripture? Are you ready? You may not believe this. Jesus learned Scripture. Jesus wasn't just born knowing Scripture. Oh, he knew the Word because he was the Word. Hallelujah. Woo! He knew the Word because he was the Word. The enemy came against him with the Word, but the Word had become flesh. And the Word, you can't tell. Oh, glory. Whew. Jesus knew the word because, let me slow this down, Jesus learned the word. Correct. Jesus was, yes, God, but he became a man. He did. And he quoted, it is written because he had read what was written? Hebrews chapter 5. This is probably as far as I'm going to get to go today, but I'm going to try. Hebrews chapter 5, 7 and 8. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers. He prayed? Was he talking to himself? He was talking to his daddy, wasn't he? He offered up prayers and petition with fervent cries and tears. What was he getting emotional about? He knew the end, didn't he? Come here, come here, come here, come here. Not only did Mary not know... But Jesus didn't know everything either. You can go ahead and blast, throw my blaspheme symbol up there, delete me, get off the page. When you go against, you know, the Christmas song, Mary, did you know? Well, no, she didn't know. She didn't know. She wasn't at the tomb waiting on the resurrection. Jesus didn't know either. Listen to me. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he prayed, he petitioned, fervently cried with tears to the one who could save him from death. Who? His father. And he was heard because of his reverent submission, his humility. Verse 8, son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Verse 8, capital S, son though he was, son though he was, son though he was, he learned obedience 
from what he suffered. Jesus learned? That's correct. At least that's what Scripture says. Son though he was, he learned. Jesus had spiritual disciplines. He prayed, he tithed, he witnessed, he fasted, he read the Word. Jesus did all these. Don't you think we need to? Correct, correct. Now look, as far as I can go today, and boy do I have more. So we're going to pick right back up here tomorrow. Because there's a lot more to this Jesus learning the Word. I know it's stunning to some of you Charismatics and Pentecostals and you liberal Baptists, but the truth is, he didn't just show up knowing everything. He grew. He learned. And though he was the Son, he learned through obedience and suffering. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I just pray that you bring these folks back tomorrow because there is a powerful, powerful truth in this. And we're going to begin to understand why the enemy wants to steal the word from us so badly. Because it is the disarming, powerful weapon of victory in our lives when we know the Jesus that Paul knew. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I'll see you guys back tomorrow. Yeah, 20 minutes. It's tough to do this, but we come back every day. I love all of y'all. Bye. I'll see you tomorrow. Invite somebody not to miss this. Some people are going to be stunned. I'll see you later. Bye.